Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better ask. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the trap dog. Giving them all. Just like a million bucks, but things in his cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey. Oh yeah. And listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Y'all listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. <laughs> yeah, I do. Tickle me when I say it, but I do. Like I say always, it just is a constant reminder of, of how good God has been. So my question to you is, what's stopping you from having the life that you want? What's stopping you from having the life that you want? I know a lot of people who have given up on achieving the life of their dreams. But I know they'd still want them if they could get to them, but they just allowed to settle for so many reasons. So who I'm talking to is you today. What's really at the core of stopping you? What is that? Is it your friends or your associates? Is it the fear of what you think somebody else will think of you? If you decide to change, is it what I used to call the call of the wild? Is it the fact that you keep thinking that the thing that you're doing that's providing you these momentary moments of pleasure that really ain't really good or healthy for you, you don't want to stop doing that because you've got just a little bit more something else you want to do? I call that the call of the wild. You know, it's just out there. Them streets is calling you. Them lights is calling you. You know, them girls is calling you. Them guys that's on the wrong side keep calling you. You can't seem to make a decision by the right guy. You keep picking the wrong guy all the time. What is it that's stopping you from having the life that you really want to have? So whatever the reason you're choosing, that's the reason that's stopping you from having the life that you want to have. It's no good because at the end of the day, here's the real deal. See, God is available. And God is available for all of us. And God has a plan for all of us. And God wants the very best for all of us. That's the truth of the matter. So now, what are we going to do to get started having that life? First of all, if it's your friends, I want you to understand something. Your friends can't save you. A lot of your friends offer no real help for you. Most of your friends don't have the answer themselves. I mean, it's just a wide range of reasons. And misery love company. So usually when your friends are in a bad position, they kind of like company in that bad position. Your friends ain't going to church. You're going to be their friend. They don't really want you to go to church. You know, your friends don't pray. So why would they offer up prayer as a solution to you? You know, your friends don't really, really get 
uh, the fact that if you treat people better, people would treat you better. So what's that? So your friends are a lot of times the reasons, you know, the peer pressure of what, and then the thought in your mind of what they're going to think once they find out I don't do what they do anymore. Who cares what they think other than you? I mean, really, you can't let what somebody thinks of you stop you from having the best life you wanted to have. If I went by that theory right there, I would I wouldn't even be on this mic this morning. I would have never become a stand up. I would have had I listened to the people around me who clearly told me when I quit my job to pursue this. Boy, don't you quit your job. You got a family. Boy, don't you do this. You ain't got no bit. That ain't ain't no security in that. Get yourself a job. Go down here and work your brother. Go to work over here. Go to. I heard all of that. I didn't let that stop me from pursuing this. Why would you allow that to stop you from pursuing your relationship with God so you can have the best life you could possibly have? You gang bang because they've convinced you that this is the family situation and love that you don't have. And they've convinced you that this is your only way, your only source of getting over. And then you drum up these ignorant reasons, man, for staying with it. But they sound so good when you're listening to everybody else you're surrounded by telling you why we gang banging, why we holding this block down, why we slanging this thing here right here, why we letting it go like this here. You keep listening to them when all in your heart of hearts, you know, this ain't right. You already know, but you allow that form of the call of the wild, that wanting to be accepted by a group of people who are trying to get you to accept a way so you can further their progress, to even prove that you worthy to be around them, you got to commit some type of crime. To even prove that you worthy to be around them. Then when you get busted on the crime, what happens to that? Where your family at now? They don't come down there to see you because guess what? They can't turn in their ID at the desk at a law enforcement center. So now your homies can't come visit you. And then, you know, your family back out here, they ain't taking care of your family because it's all about them. Then you learn that. What is it that's stopping you from having the life that you always wanted to have? What is it? Why are you a repeat offender? Why do you keep checking yourself back into that institution? Why, man? Why won't you get it together? Why won't you give God a try? Why won't you disassociate yourself? Why would you continue to be a part of a revolving door system and becoming the farm system for these institutions that ain't got nothing for you? But you keep going back in there, and then every time you go in there, and then your little homies or your gang-banging little, little silly little friends try to make you think that's a badge of honor. There ain't no badge of honor, man. That's one more, that's one more scratch on that record. That's one more that's one more nail in that coffin. That's one step closer to that third strike where you ain't gonna ever get out. It's one step closer to that graveyard. You keep on. Why would you not give God a try? Why would you not go and see what your life could really be? What is it that's stopping you? Because see, I got news for you. There's nothing like waking up free. I don't care who you are. There's nothing like waking up with the joy in your heart. Now, if you ain't going to be free, get the joy in your heart, the satisfaction of knowing that you're accomplishing something with your life. Help somebody behind them bars. Get in the program. Show these young cats when they come in a better way. But don't you dare sit there, man, and just ride it out. And, man, just, just go and get the fullest life that you can have. What... You know what it feels like to wake up and be on your way somewhere, knowing that you have something to accomplish, that you can change somebody, that you can stop somebody from going down the road you went down. It's a whole lot of ways to make your life better. But why would you not go and have the best life you can have? What is it that's stopping you? Really? Really? So you think that Satan really has your best interests at heart? That, that little thing your mama kept telling you about praying, you wasn't listening, was you? But you know, it ain't ever too late to get back to that. It ain't ever too late to turn around. It ain't ever too late to get your life together. It ain't ever too late to seek God. And it ain't ever too late to pray. Don't forget to pray. Don't be ashamed to pray. And don't be too proud to pray. Because prayer changes things. Prayer changes people too. I'm a witness to that.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, animal trainers, dog catchers, people that only cut the edges of your yard, Not the- tree trimmers. <laughs> What? The edges. People what? that get in that basket and ride up there and fix the electrical poles. Those of you that ride on the back of waste management trucks, my brothers. All of you who drive Lyft, Uber, or any illegal form of transportation. Mm. I am welcoming you to the Steve Harvey Morning Show this morning with all that's in me. Rise and shine. And get your attitude together. If you get your gratitude together, it affects your attitude, which is in direct correlation with your altitude. It just works that way. Another day, another gift, another chance, another opportunity. That's all it is, man. You ought to be grateful for that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica Jr., and the legend of nephew Tommy. Junior, you little uh, yeah. it's a little, a little, a little bent, a little. You, you there, not there. You almost in it. I would say, judging by the vibe today, you seem to be about seventy five percent. What's going uh, on with you today? Um, Unc, I was uh, I'm going See, down I there. So insightful, I'm, Steve. I'm going. Yeah, he be known. I don't know how he do it, but I'm, I'm going well, down it's, there. It's on your face. <laughs> Okay, well, it ain't, on, okay. it ain't on your head. It's on your face. Well, that's what I was saying, Tommy. I'm going down here to do an assessment for the, with the hair club for men today. Oh. And, oh, uh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. And I'm going to um, see what they say so I can, you know, get the get everything fixed up there so y'all can just lay off my hairline. That's what I'm going lay to do off. today. Lay off. That's the key word is lay yeah, off. I'm going to tell you right now, Junior, if you all of a sudden show up with a hairline... <laughs> Let's go start over. <laughs> Let the games begin. Uh, it's the best way I can. New level, new see, devil. See, see, see that? See how you go? Yeah. So you just go snatch my happiness? Just no, Junior. What we are telling you is, we'll we're watching it slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. <laughs> Oh, baby. But the so, fact that so. your average white band song, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but oh, you, you've accepted it now, your hairline? You've accepted well, it? Well, after after it? after Tommy and Uncle Steve have been, been talking uh, about my hairline, I, I, I decided to go down here and let them do an assessment on Now, when I come back, mm-hmm. then we'll talk about what treatments I have, and I can tell you better, Uncle. Cloudy, but, don't you trip. Oh, you're in denial. See, oh, so Junior, you're gonna oh. be like on those social media videos of Barber TikTok. No, oh, no, 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 I'm doing that. Getting no, no, that we gonna lift it away. But he said if I show up with a new hairline, feels it's cool. like I'm losing See there? you. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Why are you singing? We're trying to. My hair. Well, Junior, this is good. I right. thought it would be, but uh, clearly Uncle Steve and Tommy don't. That's all. <laughs> oh, we just letting you know, dog. If you come in here tomorrow, you got hair full of hair. Big old fro. Uh, Let me tell you. I got, I got it for you, dog. But Junior has Hair clothes, club going to be rich as hell. Because <laughs> we're doing hair club commercials every day for free. <laughs> all right. No one can stop you. minutes after the hour. We can't wait, Junior. <laughs> We're going to hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? You know, you can pee everywhere you want to pee. I don't care where you huh? pee. You pee anywhere. I don't care where you pee at. But you can't what? pee. I'm huh? telling you right now, if I'm over there and it's hot and I can't. And I ain't you got to go. I'm gonna make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your house, your tree, your, your own, uh, everything. <laughs> Yo, tree, be over there next to your dog. <laughs> All right. Be on my house. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hello. Uh, I'm trying to reach a, uh, uh, Mr. R- I think that's the name. Yeah, this is this. Is, what's this in regard to? Uh, this is about an uh, air conditioner unit. You did some work uh, for us over on uh, my house over off Street. Do you remember coming out there last week? Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Right, my uh, it was a lady there, my wife. She let you in to come out. Uh, right, right. Is there, is there a problem? Is there a problem? The air's not cooling or what? 
No, 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 no. It's cooling. Everything. Matter of fact, I want to tell you uh, uh, that you did a you did a good job. But uh, I got a question for you now. When you was at the house and you was uh, working on the air conditioner out there in the backyard, did you did you happen to go on the side of my house and pull out and use the bathroom right there on the side? Did you go over there and, and you do number one on the side of my house? Like what? Well, what I'm saying is that. My wife tells me that when you were there, that you you went on the. She was looking out the window. She says that when you was there, that you uh, and went and used the bathroom on the side of the. Hold, of the hold, 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 Wait a minute. I did what? Not to what? I right. You 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 and you did number one over on the side of the house. Now is is that something that you did? Say, man, look, uh, you you got to understand something, man. All right, now, nah, I, I apologize if that did happen, but you got to understand something. You know, we're down south, man, and, you know, we're talking 85, 90, 95 degree weather, man. I got to stay hydrated. I got to drink a lot of fluids. So, you know, with me being the age that I am, I have to drink a lot of fluids and attend to pass through. Uh, that, look, now, once, once again, I said I apologize. I understand all that, but you know what? I can't accept no apology like that when I got a man that's put, got on the side of my house and then oh, and Man, now I'm apologizing to you, and you coming off on me like that? You, you done put you done in front, on the side of my house in front of my wife. I, now, look here, young man. Now, if your wife saw me evidently, she need to see some type of because you evidently ain't doing some you who the hell? Who you think you talking to? Why is your wife watching me anyway do my work? What is she that hard up that she got to look at the old man? Look, look, look. All I know is I don't want no man at my house, in the house, side of the house, backyard. Nothing. Well, you should have been there. Hey, I, look, man, let me tell you something, dog. Let me tell you something. I'm the only person at my house. You understand well, me? Evidently, you ain't right if she out there looking at me. Look here, son. I'm a professional, okay? I do my job and I take my job with pride, okay? It's not being professional. If there's something that I did, that's that water running through me. All right? Okay, now, but you don't, you don't at no other man's house. And you at my house and my wife sitting there looking at you out the window. Now, I got a problem with that. Well, what you need to have a problem with is your wife looking at me if that's what I did. You know what? You need to be at home and give her something to look at other than looking at me. You don't tell me what I need to do about my wife. Now you don't go to another man. Man, you know what? I'm about to lose it. All right. Now I you go. You, you, you gonna make you gonna make me lose it. Let me let me get my that guy. Let me get my book. That's all. Uh, yeah, I got you get, right here. I got you your damn right. right. And I'm gonna. I, I, I you what? Right yeah. That's yeah, I'm gonna that's fine. I'm gonna show you what it is. You you don't at another man's house. You don't do that. And people, my wife looking out the window, and I bet you knew that them blinds was open. Young man, nah, you did, you did, you did me real upset with these accusations. All right, now look, you had, you had, what is the street? Nah, you are, you, you know where I'm at. You, out there, I will show you what the is. I want you to bring your ass back over nah, here on Phillips. I know exactly what you said. You that yoked on that, on that, on that go, go on uh, street. I'm gonna come over there, and I got something for your youngster. I got something for you. Now Who you, you think? Me disregard my professionalism, and I'm gonna come show you what being is about. Look, man, what you don't do is at another man's house, and that's what you did, and you know it ain't called for. Now you could have held that. I apologize, man. I had to go. I told you I drank a lot of fluids in this hot heat, man. Now what else do you want me to do? I want you to keep your fluid till you get to the service station down the street, but not in my backyard side of the house and my wife looking out the window. Man, f you and f what you talking about. If I did, I apologize. If you can't accept it, then the hell with it. Look at you. You're you going to me off and make me do something up in here. I'm telling what you, you now. What you going to do, man? I done told you. I apologize to you, and I will come over there and kick your okay? No, you ain't. I, I take, you'll do what? Let me tell I you something. I'll kick your young Cause judging from the age of your wife, your wife is young, and I know he's young. You can't deal with no old school. I'll kick your young. You gon' you gon' get your ass whooped today. You hear me? You no, gon' get. No. Let, let me no, tell you. you street two, I'll come no, your young. Let me tell you, so I got one more thing to say to you. Is you listening to me? Speak, speak, damn it. 
This is Nephew Tommy. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy named... Man, man. Now, you know what? I'm going to get with his... He know I got heart palpitations. And I don't need this type of in my life, man. He said, man, my boy be out there fixing air conditions and heaters all day. He said, man, let me tell you something. He said he'd be frustrated to begin with. He said, but give him a call. He, he ain't said, know me... it, man, because I got nine or ten more I still got to do today. <laughs> hey, man, you all right? Man, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all right now, nephew. I'm all right now, nephew. <laughs> nephew Tommy, you and that Steve Hall are some damn fools in the morning. I listen to y'all cats every in the morning, man. I don't know how in the hell. I sit back riding laughing. And how y'all get people, and y'all done got me with the same <laughs> Oh, man. I enjoy y'all show, man. Y'all keep up the good God going work. I appreciate it, man. I got one more question to ask you, man. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? Well, you know, the Steve Harvey <laughs> Morning Show. <laughs> yep, All right. Yep. Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO, our chief love officer. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, President Biden will deliver the commencement speech at Morehouse College. Magic Johnson was devastated after the L.A. Lakers game two loss. And John Legend says Donald Trump is racist at the core, at his core. And we'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO. This is from Leah in Kansas City. Leah writes, uh, my husband answers his phone and walks away from me. He's even gone outside in the snow before just to talk on the phone. When I fuss about it, he says there's some stuff that he tells his boys and I don't need to hear it. Like what? Why? Oh, that's a true statement. That is now that right there, that is not a lie. (laughs) That is a true statement. Now uh, we have conversation with our boys. Trust me that you cannot hear. It's things we say when we get together that you cannot hear. But Mm -hmm. let's flip it. It's also things that women say women that we cannot right. hear. That's conversation y'all have with y'all girls. Y'all don't want your husband listening to you talk like that. Right. Mm-mm. That's true. That's what it is. Yeah. And it that, is. If, if he's basing it, that right there is a true statement. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, I was going to say, isn't she concerned, though, that he might be walking away because it's another woman? She could be very concerned. But if you ain't heard no woman on the phone, you're going to have to go with what he said. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You have not oh, heard no woman on the phone. You ain't found no text or seen no she picture. She can't hear it because he walked away. He walks away. Yeah. <laughs> Go outside. Put them on speaker. Let yeah. Me speak I'm telling you right now, there are things me and my dudes talk about my wife don't need to hear. Well, yeah, I get so that sure. because women that do so it too. Yeah, yeah, I get that part. Yeah. yeah. All right. Moving Matter on fact, to... fact, the majority of women. Yes. <laughs> I stay outside. My I husband stay out there. <laughs> he like, I'm going to watch the dog again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, this, who this dog tag? <laughs> All right. Go Shirley. Felicia in Cincinnati says, I went in my husband's stash to get a cigar to smoke with him last night, and I saw three flavored cigars. He said he got them for a co-worker to try. He said it's no big deal, and he forgot to take them to her. Should I deliver the cigars to the lady? Hmm. No, you shouldn't, because you don't know which one she's supposed to get. <laughs> the flavor. Damn. One. That's the concern. But you don't. <laughs> why? You you got to deliver them. He said he forgot. Now he remember. He'll give them to her. Mm. Why is she mm. going in his stash, though? But, but, but if you deliver, see, if you deliver the cigar, you don't know what to say. You don't smoke cigars. She does smoke. She does. <laughs> no, she, she does smokes. Smoke. She yeah, does. she does smoke. That's why she went in a stash. So she could smoke one with him. He need to quit smoking with her. <laughs> smoke one every day. Oh, that's okay. You don't have to deliver them. I'll take them to her. Thank you. That's what she said. Uh-huh. Here go I your funky this. cigars my man had. <laughs> she going to take them up there. <laughs> now, that's matter. either an acid or you got them yep. Javas, coffee, or them mints. Or you mm-hmm. got them, uh, don't get them cheap ones, them uh, honeybees. They make, they make good cigars. What is them Tahitian things, though? Uh, Tahitian. Tahitian. Ta- Tatiana. Come in Tatiana, that's what I'm trying to Yeah. <laughs> Tatiana. You are awful. No, man. That's, that's Way Tahitian. 
<laughs> That's just a fruity, cool mile. That's all that is. That ain't no <laughs> I don't even, and I don't like the size of a meter. That's not the one. If you're going to do that, use acid cigar. Black and mild. All right, I guess we're Black done with that one. Not uh, a cigar. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> moving on to Maurice really in Detroit. Not. Y'all need to stop now. <laughs> Maurice said, I started flipping houses. My first flip is a nice townhouse. My wife wants me to rent it to her mom, who is raising three grandkids. Nothing is wrong with her mom's current house. She just wants a newer house. How do I say no and stand on it? No. Say no and stand on it and flip your house. Your mama ain't going to have to pay you that rent. Mm-hmm. Your rent going to be late. You ain't going to be able to do nothing. She going to be calling you, talking about she ain't got it this month. No. Your mama just want a new house. Find another house. No, I'm, this is the business we in to flip these houses and produce mm-hmm. a profit. You can, it's hard to get your hands on lump sums of money in life. So if you can flip a house, sell it, let's say you make 20, 30 on it, something like that, whatever you flipping it and making it on, you can't going to be able to get that from your mom in law. She not going to pay on time. <laughs> she not going to pay sometime. Mm-hmm. And now, and now, and now, all this money you done put into this house, you ready to flip it? Now, it, it, so it's a no. It's a hard ass no. But isn't his wife gonna be upset about that? Cause it's her. I'm mom. gonna help your mama find a really nice place to stay. But we're mm-hmm. gonna flip this house so we can make this profit, so we can keep the ball rolling. Yeah. Okay. In the words of Slick Hard, the best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them. Mm-hmm. We got to keep our money rolling. So your yeah. mama, when she come over here with her begging ass, I have something to give her. You gonna say well, that? She's raising three grand. No, I'm not gonna say it like that. that, part, that, part, <laughs> yeah. that part, yeah. I'm, I'm pushing that head. in my head the whole. Time. Oh. Oh, yeah, those are head inside thoughts. Inside voice. Oh, 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 yeah, I just gave y'all head thoughts, right? Now. Okay. Nothing okay. I'm not gonna say out loud. So I how like does it come out then? How it come oh, out? it's not gonna come out. It's not gonna come out, Junior. And you sit your young self over there and learn yourself something because you don't know enough right now. All right, last one, Steve. Last one. This is from Roxy and Yonkers. Roxy writes, I'm 14 years older than my husband. He never seemed to mind, but I heard him tell his friend that his gray hair is making him look as old as his wife. He said he was joking, but it's not funny to me. Does this mean my age is finally getting to him? Wow. No, your, your age is finally than got to everybody. Everybody see it. Mm-hmm. Huh? If he said this out loud, uh-huh. mm-hmm. what didn't happen, sister, is... Your age and it's showing. Behind every joke is the truth. Mm-hmm. And now this gray hair in his head got him looking just as old as his wife. Now it ain't no finally got to him. It done finally surfaced and showed up. Cause when he married you, it wasn't no problem. But now y'all been married for a while. 14. And it's starting to show itself. Yeah. And She's that's 14. what that sign is. So he's 50. She's I don't know why y'all trying to fight me on this. It's, no, it's I'm just, to I want to hear what it's you just have to start say. To show. Hey, look, I look, I can't save everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus did that. Thank you. That's not what this segment is about. <laughs> no, some of this, some of this asked to see. Hello, we're gonna have to tell the truth up in here. <laughs> so now, he told his friends as a joke, but then behind every joke is the truth. Now mm-hmm. and now he's starting to feel like he looking old as you. So now, if he catching up, what that mean? If, if you catching up or you or, or you jumping out there in leaps and bounds, just check yourself. Get in the mirror. Take a close look. So, yeah, that's what she wants to know. Does this mean my age is finally finally getting to him? No, it ain't getting to him. It's time to get to him. See, why, see, listen to me. Why are you blaming the man? This ain't the man's fault. Is my age finally getting to him? No, your age is finally caught up to you. Mm. Anybody say it. Ah, you look 14 years older. All right, CLO. Change your hairstyle. Look at your wardrobe. Uh Get a makeover. Is that what you're saying? You got to do, you need stronger foundation. Coming up at the top of the hour, yeah. This is craziness right here. You need to get your baseline up. No, no, no. They don't need to get mad at me. (laughs) Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The White House has confirmed that President Biden will deliver the commencement address at Morehouse College on May 19th. 
Morehouse's president released a statement saying we eagerly anticipate welcoming President Biden back to the House next month. We, he went on to say his presence serves as a reminder of our institution's enduring legacy and impact, as well as our continued commitment to excellent excellence, progress and positive change. So they're yeah, looking I, forward. Mo, to Mo House has done some incredible stuff. Man. Mm-hmm. They yeah. really have. Yeah. Yeah. One That's of good. the great HBCU. There's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Yes, There's a lot sir. of them out there. They're, yeah. They're, they're the house. Some real mm-hmm. talent. Yeah. Right. Mo House. Congratulations man. to Mo House. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mo House. <laughs> <laughs> In other entertainment news, during a recent MSNBC interview, uh, John Legend says. He doesn't want to hear what Donald Trump has done for black people, and he is a racist. Take a listen. Made it clear throughout his life that he believes black people are inferior. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like he believes that to his core, in his bones. He wouldn't let us live in his buildings uh, back in the day. But also, uh, when you hear uh, some of the stray comments he makes, he clearly believes in a genetic hierarchy Mm -hmm. of humanity and and, and is racially uh, determined. Uh, So he is a tried and true, uh, like, Died in the wool racist. Like, in his, the core of his being, he's a racist. So, I don't want to hear what he has to say about uh, what he's done for black people. He's done very little for us. Thank you. I don't know, I don't know anything he's done for black people. Uh uh-uh. uh. Name one. And then I want to say this too. I want, I want to make a couple of statements. First of all, we as a people, have to stop waiting on somebody who's going to do something for us because that Calvary yeah. is never coming over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know who that the, the last time I saw somebody trying to do something for us that was not one of us. I, 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 I don't I don't I don't remember who that is. I, I don't mm-hmm. it, it, mm-hmm. you can enlighten me. Please show me because I, I, I don't know nobody that has an agenda for black people. Now, Obama did some things and he didn't get enough credit for it, where he slid some things in that was helping. The Health Care Act was to help us. Uh, yeah. The release and what Biden is doing now, the relief, the, the relieving of uh, debt is. Uh, yeah, uh, college student loans. loans. Yeah. That's, huge. Loans. That's huge. Yeah. That's yes, huge. Sir. But now, let me say this, though. I was just thinking the other day about Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? Hmm. What? I don't understand the hypocrisy of this country with Donald Trump. This is a man who has 91 indictments, correct? Yep. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. He's on a <laughs> trial. He's on in a trial right now for a crime. Yes. Correct? Do you know money. that if you went to FedEx, the post office, UPS, if you went to McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy, Whataburger, or Jack in the Box? And you had on your application that you had one indictment pending. Just one. Your Good ass job. not getting a job. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. How in the world can you have 91 indictments and be in for a job, let alone the highest office in America? This is hypocrisy. If you had an indictment, you would lose the job you at right now. Mm, just one. They would suspend one. you. Right. Mm-hmm. They would suspend you from the police department. Mm-hmm. They would suspend your ass from FedEx. You get an indictment on you. Just one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't do work here no more. Checks. You, bro, if mm-hmm. they put if you put it on the application, you won't work here no more. Mm-hmm. How in the hell can mm-hmm. this be? This is crazy. Mm-hmm. I wonder what Stephen A. would say about that. Uh, ooh, backtracking. And let me say this right here about that. Oh, too. man. Listen, I'm just putting it all out All of us, all of us that have microphones, yes. that have a voice, we are not necessarily the voice of black people. We are not. No. Ain't nobody voted us that. <laughs> but if you are talking to us in large numbers, you have to be mindful of the things you are saying because what you say can hurt us. Mm-hmm. Just like you can encourage us, just like you can enlighten us, and just like you can empower us, you can also hurt us. Mm-hmm. We have got to be mindful of the things we say. And your opinion ain't that damn important at the cost of us as a people and a culture. I don't give a damn 
if you have the right to think or say what you want to say. Freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. It don't mean you should. We, when have we ever had freedom of speech? <laughs> I, I mean, I wish y'all would get out that line because I'm going to remind you of several places in the Constitution that you are not. Mm. Now, you can sing the Star Spangled Banner and the National Anthem all your ass want. It don't really apply to you. So this freedom of speech, man, we got to temper what we say because we are held to a different standard in this country and you know it. Yeah. So get Steve. smart out here, man. And stop running your mouth just because you can. Stephen A. Smith apologized. Oh, I'm oh, not even, is. I ain't even just talking about Stephen A. No, Smith. I'm just I, saying I, I call no, him personally. Him. Yeah. yeah. You gonna call him. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I, mean, I got his number. I mean, as you should, though. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's why we have to be careful. You all tell me all the time, Steve. Steve. Ooh. Ooh, yes, all the time. Every day. Don't say that. Er day. Man, I tell you, man, I be ready to. Whew. <laughs> Go in. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. Well, um, you know, we'll keep watching. The Hush Money trial is still going on, so um, we'll keep you updated. Coming up at about 20 minutes after the hour, Steve, people call. They want to talk to you. They leave you voicemails. Uh, we're going to check your voicemail coming up at 877-29-STEVE. 877-29-STEVE right after this. Who going to check me, boo? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it's time to check your voicemail, 877-29-STEVE. You can call if you want to leave a message for Steve. You might just hear your call on the air. Steve, you ready to go? Uh-huh. This one's from Columbia, a listener from Columbia, South Carolina. Um, he listens to the Big DM radio station. Yeah, bro. I tell you, man, you, you about the best man, black brother I've heard all my life, man. You got television, you got radio, you got affection, and I love your um, comment in the mornings, man. You know, you show your love to a lot of people, man, who uh, keep doing it, man. Uh, I'm like up early in the morning, this is your show, on, on the big DM, just South Carolina. Do doing what you're doing, man. I need a job, Steve. I'm going to resign myself. Uh, peace on to you, bro. He's a what? He's a what? I, I, I didn't hear that last time. Yeah. I didn't yeah. hear it. He's got his job, D. I'm about to resign yeah, myself. I, I, I don't know what Inaudible. I'm going to say this to him. Thank you. He said he needs a said. job. Just say that. Uh, look, we, this, ain't, this ain't the place for that. Listen, uh, we, <laughs> I appreciate everything he said. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to continue to do my best. Yes, sir. And mm -hmm. uh, try to speak up and be a, a beacon for black people. Mm -hmm. And not a leader, not a spokesperson, but a beacon. Just yes. saying. I, I try to say stuff to make the pathway lighter for us. Because I'm older than most of the people that listen to my show. So I'm just trying to put some path lights out there to show you the way I did it. Maybe it can help you. That's my mission. Thank you. That's all it is. But by the grace of God, I am who I am. Yes, sir. That's all I am. <laughs> Please. Right, Steve. Now this next But I'm call... a little sideways too, though. Just want to throw that out. <laughs> <laughs> this next Load call... Off. <laughs> is uh, from a fan of Junior's who left a message. Take a listen. Hey, what's going on, Steve, Shirley, Carla, Tommy? But well, I'm really talking to Junior right now. Hey, man, Junior, we need some more poetry. I'm going to need you to uh, come up with some stuff about these sports, and we need more poetry, Steve. Don't hold that boy's talent back. Give him some poetry, man. This is Big J from Compton. Let that man's talent shine. I've got your back, Junior. Make it happen. All that poetry. I never liked poetry until I heard Junior's poetry. So let J Rap do his thing. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Big J. <laughs> Straight out of Compton. <laughs> Straight out of Compton. Big J. <laughs> Big J. Junior, your chest is really See that, huh? up. Told you. No. Mm -hmm. it's poetry changing lives out here. What is that look on your face, Steve? What is that? What's wrong? <laughs> look, it's I don't want no smoke with Big J. Uh, I out really of uh -uh. Uh -uh. That ain't what I want. Uh -huh. <laughs> However, Not what you want. <laughs> but Big J, if you started just start liking poetry, called the Junior. <laughs> because of Junior. Uh, I don't. I don't know what you've been listening to before, but <laughs> I'm gonna send you some some tapes. <laughs> Some more poets. Other poets. All right. We'll have more calls. Where he at. 
<laughs> Coming up, 877-29-STEVE, right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time now to check more of Steve's voicemails at 877-29-STEVE. Call if you want to leave a message for Steve. Uh, we might just play your call on the air. All right, here we go with more calls, Steve. A listener named Zach left a message. Hey, Steve, this is Zach, man. I listen to your show every morning. It's very inspirational. I was one of those dudes that went to prison and went to jail. And if it wasn't for God, I would have never made it mentally or physically out of that place because I was in a dark spot, which was what led me there. And when I listen to your shows in the morning, it gives me that extra little bit of information or inspiration that I need to uh, just, you know, start my day off on a positive note. So thank you. There you go, Steve. There you go. Appreciate you, man. That's what you're doing, you know. That's nice. Yeah. That's all you're doing for. You know, that that call right there is almost up there. Almost up there with the call Junior just got from Big J. You know. (laughs) You ain't gonna let that go. No, man. (laughs) You know. No, no, no. I just want Junior to be able to drink that and absorb that in because he don't get that many of them people requesting his poetry. So I'm gonna allow him to drink that one all the way in. And you know, I just want you to know, Big J, I'm not holding his talent back, but that's all he got. (laughs) Dang. No, I mean, he's doing the best he can. Them the points he got. When he get a poem, we let him do it. He don't come up with him very now and then. It's hard on him, I think. <laughs> but don't you, don't you think it, we can't wait for the next time Junior does give us I, a, poem. a poem? It, it begs for a poem. Yeah. I'm just doing it. You know, I feel good. like a poem. Hey, Junior, Junior be careful now. Well, be careful <laughs> what? It's just a poem. What it's just saying? a poem. No, no, no. no. Oh. Hey, hey, easy now. <laughs> easy what? Watch. Jay gonna wait, just step it. Uh, anyway, yeah, listen to Jay. Okay, all right. All right. Watch where you step. Big Jay, right. straight out of Compton. <laughs> well, well, I ain't talking Big Jay. I'm talking little. I'm, I'm talking little K. Here, you know, ain't nobody talking to Big Jay. I'm talking to little K. Watch where you step now. I said that. Easy, easy. <laughs> all right, moving on. We have we have more calls. This is from uh, Sandra. Good morning. It's me, Mr. C. Harvard, Sandra Jackson. I love what you just said. I hate when blacks fight one another. I hate when blacks shoot and kill one another. I hate that. I don't even like to see a movie where blacks fighting one another, killing one another. I do do not like it. One more thing I want to say. What you just got through saying about the rappers beefing, the comedians, it, let them know it's enough money for everybody to get songs. It's enough money for everybody out here to get songs. The money is not going nowhere. It is enough money for everybody to have two and three big mansions, four and five cars. Let them know. Quit hating. It's enough money for everybody to get songs. Okay, again, this me. And I love what you just got through talking about. All right. Bye-bye. Yes, sir. All right, Sandra. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Did she take the A out of another? Did she say one another? <laughs> yeah. I yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. See, 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 that's when you know it's serious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. One another. And it is. You know what? That's a crazy statement. It is enough money for everybody. Mm. We have got, we, we do this crab in the barrel thing to each other, which don't make no sense. The the lid is wide open. Everybody can get out. Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. can get out. Even you. As a matter of fact, if you help somebody get up, you ain't heavy. You my brother. I can I can reach back and grab you. But man, we just we we in a we in a we we're in a place, man. What we we. Y'all, I'm telling you, we not winning. We, we're, we're not truly winning. Mm-hmm. No, we, we, because the greats get up there, and then you you cheer for them all the way up to the top. Then when they get up there, your, your whole mission is their demise. Yup. That, that mm-hmm. don't make no sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All these rappers beefing with Drake. Man, y'all, dog, that dude out there, he way mm-hmm. out there. <laughs> when you get through talking about him, you ain't finna be close. you still ain't close homie all right steve thank you thank you to all our callers as well coming up next the nephew and the prank phone call for today right after this you're listening to the steve harvey morning show 
Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is fight or flight. Fight or flight. We'll get into that in just a few because right now the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. Nephew, what you got? Well, I want y'all to picture me as a stripper today, okay? Picture me oh, as a stripper today. Delete. I know you oh, can see that. I wish I would, though. Delete, oh. delete. <laughs> what? I got it. I can see it. You can got see it? I name for you and everything. Hell yeah. What's I got the name? the name, huh? I got the name. The name is Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. No, oh, that ain't the name I had. Oh, Lord. What did you have? What name you got? Mighty Mouse. <laughs> oh, see right there, right there. You, you come, they can fly you in on the cape and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, you out there standing on block of cheese, just stripping. Oh <laughs> Lord, this is this is Thunderbolt, y'all. All right, Thunderbolt. Let's go, cat dog. Hello. Hey man, let me. Uh, must be not not here. Who's calling? Hey, this is Thunderbolt from the club, man. Uh, what time does she get in? Thunderbolt. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, this Thunderbolt, man. What time she get in? What you mean? What time she get in? Uh, she ain't in here now, but you know, I mean, I. What you need? Hey, uh, this, I'm this, trying this, to. This, you know, I'm David. following up on. Uh, I'm trying to actually get an address and stuff, man. She got me dancing this weekend on Saturday night, and uh, I want to see it. Make sure I got the address and everything. Everything's still on. You know, I don't already gave she my got, slot up at the club. She got you dancing. Say what now? What you mean she got you dancing? She asked me to do some male dancing on Saturday night. So I, I went on and took off at the club. And, uh, you know, she don't no, already got my, my girl ain't, she ain't had to do no male dancing. My girl, she, nah. My girl, she goes she go to school at, at at night on weekends. So, you know, she, but nah, she ain't. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, who is this here? My name's David. David, my uh, fiance. What? Yeah, that's my girl. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Squeaky finna get married? Squeaky? Who the f is Squeaky? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, you, you. My guy named. I'm David. Right. Okay. That, 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 that's squeaky. Squeaky finna get How you know my gal? You say you a dancer? I dance at. Man, is I'm Thunderbolt. Yeah, but I'm, how do you know my gal? She come to the club on Saturday. She asked me about doing some dancing for this coming Saturday, so she already gave me half the money. She come to the club on on Saturdays. No, nah, my gal. She she go to school on Saturdays, man. You know, no. Homeboy, listen. All right, first of all, I'm blown away by you trying to tell me Squeaky married. That that you got me really toe up with first that. Up, I don't know no no Squeaky. That's what we call her at the club, man. Hey man, look, I'm not finna get into all of that. What I'm really calling about is she got me working this weekend doing some dancing, and I'm trying to just make sure that we on for this weekend because I didn't get my spot up uh, at the club. You trying to tell me my girl hanging out at a <laughs> buck naked club with <laughs> dance? Man, Squeaky been coming up in there, man, for the last buck. Squeaky, she been there long enough to have a dick name. Dog, I've been knowing Squeaky four, five years. Squeaky been coming. Man, this this Thunderbolt, me and Squeaky go way back. Oh, no, man. Well, we're going to handle this when she get in here. And you can, you know, handle yours, however you got to handle it, talk to whoever you got to to get your little money or whatever. Or no, 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 no. Hold on, man. I can't know, get but, my slot back, dog. Here, oh, hold on, wait a minute, man. That, that's not hey, the stop. Hey, is you listening, man? I can't get my slot back at the club. Now, Squeaky got to give me the remaining balance, man, even if she ain't going to do it. I need my other the remaining one. Balance, money, Squeaky ain't going to give you the remaining balance of nothing. Hey, man, the I need the rest of my money. My money that, that she gave you. What so you saying? Ain't finna, you can just count that out. She ain't going to give you a thing. Hey, man, my Thunderbolt going to get his money, man. I need my 150. Thunderbolt going to get his <laughs> whooped. Well, then that's what you got to do. Then that's what you got to do, man. That's, I tell you what. that's for Thunderbolt. But we ain't finna get no cash talking about calling this squeaky and all this old I ain't, I ain't working for to give money away to some Thunderbolt Lightning or whatever. Hey, man, look, man, it's Thunderbolt. It ain't Lightning. It's Thunderbolt. Lightning worked on Wednesday night. This Thunderbolt. I don't know who you done talked to already about that, but you need to holler at them, but don't be calling here asking my gal to give you some money. I ain't giving you because she don't make nothing. I'm coming over there now and get my money from Squeaky. I ain't, I ain't hearing this don't make nothing. Squeaky I make all the money around here, so I, you ain't finna get nothing from over here, partner, so you can wipe that out of your mind. I'm coming over there to get my money from Squeaky today. You coming over here? I'm coming over there to get my money from Squeaky. So what, what man, look, man, I ain't got time to play. I done lost here. my slot at the club. See what you get. See if you get some money. Get your laid out. Thunder coming over there to get the rest of his Thunder, money. You better not bring your over here, because you come, well, I tell you what, bring your on over here, and I'm going to show you lightning. I didn't know you had got some money already for She riding here giving you money away. I'm struggling. I tell you what, you bring your 
Go give you want to and watch what go down. Hey man, all I'm saying is I'm finna come over there and wait outside the house for Squeaky to get there to get the rest of my money. That's what I'm saying to you. You gonna come over and sit outside? What? I'm finna come over there and wait outside for Squeaky to get there so I can get the rest hey, of my gonna money. Bring your over here and sit outside my house. That's what I'm finna do if that's what it takes for me to get my money from Squeaky. I tell you what, you bring your over here and sit outside my house. And when you get your here, you blow the horn. That's what you do. You blow the horn so I can come out there and meet you and let you know what's going down. I'm gonna bust your and when she get here, she can see your laid out like a mother. Come on over here and get your money. I'm going to get my money. All right, Squeaky owe me $150 and I'm going to come get it. I don't give a what she owe you. About $150, that's my money she's giving you. You ought to be happy with that. You want to come over here talking about you want some more money? You know, Somebody owe Thunderbolt $150 and Thunderbolt going to get his money. You better try to go and dance at that club on, on this weekend. Bring your over here. You will not be dancing at that Talking about sitting out front of my house. Squeaky gonna give me my one fifty. You ain't even got nothing to do with this no way. This transaction is between me and Squeaky. It ain't got nothing to do with you no way. Hey, her name is and it's got everything to do with me. You call my house with this talking about she owe you some money and you. I'm gonna about nothing. Bring your on over here. I got your money. Come get your when I got your money right here. I'm gonna be sitting out front waiting on you. Squeaky the one asked for me to dance Saturday night. Squeaky, I told her three hundred dollars plus tips. Now nah, I ain't gonna get no tips, but I tell you what, I am gonna get my $300, though. I got 150 and I'm gonna get the other 150 when Squeaky get home. You ain't getting it from me, you ain't get your buzzer from me. I got one more thing I need to say to you. Would you listen to me? Say, man, what the I'm listening, I can hear you. What? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your homeboy. Who? Who is this? <laughs> This is nephew Tommy, man, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your homeboy. God, you need to quit. Boy, y'all to play too much. That man, y'all had me hot round this. I'm putting on boots, and man. I got on gear. I'm finna go out here and squabble. I got pipes and bats. I'm finna go out here and spot a whoop a man. You all right, man? Y'all. Wrong. I'll be glad when somebody prank your <laughs> Tommy. I'm going to get that <laughs> Y'all got me. Y'all got me. Hey, man, Real I got thing. one more thing I got to ask you, man. Whew. What is? What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> Thunderbolt is his name, man. Thunderbolt, baby. Put mm. some spec on my thunder. You know, I don't too much do thunder. Y'all better put some spec on my thunder. <laughs> Hey, Mighty, let me ask you a question. How much do you it's charge? It's Thunderbolt. <laughs> I charge. No, no, it's Tommy. I, know. I charge for private gigs. I charge uh, to show up a thousand. Show up, you know. Mm. And then, and then you know, then you just make it rain for the tips. But, yeah, for a thousand, I show up. Mm. That's expensive. And that's for 30, wow. that's for 30 minutes. What? Know. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now my last job was at a you know a, a geriatric center, but I'm getting I'm getting more gigs coming up though. You know what you I'm saying? I'm getting booked and busy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but been, that, you know, I saw you. I, I heard what happened to you at that uh, nursing home when you was stripping. They what? didn't have the money to pay you, so they were throwing pills at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of drugs right now. A lot of drugs. But that's you good. Right. You good. I got no stuff for off riders. I got I got everything you might be looking for. I got mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But you know, hey. The nephew will be there. Let there be lines hosted by yours truly at the YouTube Theater. That is May 5th. May 5th, it is happening during the Netflix Is a Joke Festival. You got Kev on stage, Tony Baker, Lavelle Crawford, and hosted by nephew Tommy, J.J. Williamson, and my man, Fred Hammond, and his band. All clean laughs. Let there be laughs. Sure. All right, nephew. Thank you. Uh, coming up next, today's Strawberry Letter, the subject, fight or flight. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, fight or flight. 
Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 44-year-old married man, and I'm in a very high leadership role with my company. My wife and our two children enjoy my annual company picnic, and they've been out of the country twice with me on my work trips. I came from the hood, and so did my wife, and we want better for the kids. I've worked at this manufacturing company since I was in the 10th grade, and I worked my way up. My wife and I got married after high school. We had our children fairly young, so we didn't have much time to be young ourselves. And my my wife didn't have much time to keep up with her girlfriend, so now I'm her only friend and she's very clingy. And that's how she ended up getting banned from going on my work trips. Last year in Hawaii, she got bored and came to the meeting room and barged in on my presentation. She asked how much longer I'd be, and my female boss escorted her out as I continued to do my presentation. I could hear them shouting all the way down the hall, and my wife accused my boss of wanting me all to herself. I almost had a heart attack. My wife yelled at me for the rest of the trip and refused to apologize to my boss. She's left me no choice but to leave her at home this year when I go to Hawaii in July. She told me if she couldn't, if she doesn't get booked for the flight, we are going to fight until I leave and after I get back. I'm so tired and sexually frustrated because she's been holding out on sex too. I haven't slept in weeks because I feel sorry for her. All I ask is that she apologize to my boss and make things right. Am I being mean for leaving her at home or did she do this to herself? <laughs> Well, that is an easy question because, yes, obviously, absolutely, she did this to herself because don't even consider taking her crazy behind to any more of your job events. She has no boundaries. She thinks she can do whatever she wants, but uh, she forgets or doesn't think at all that her erratic behavior can mess things up for the whole family. And no, you're not being mean. Uh, you can't just sit back and let her ruin everything you work so hard for. You started from the bottom since the 10th grade. This position, your career mean a lot to you. And you're in a leadership position too at your job. Your wife is an embarrassment at this point. Uh, where's her gratitude for the life she gets to leave for the, live, for the fabulous trips or whatever else you're providing for the family? She should apologize to your boss. She should. And everyone... Um, who, who was at your presentation that day. But we all know she's not going to do that. She says she's not going to do it, and that's a shame. She's withholding sex from you, too? <sighs> Let's not forget about that. So, um, so far, you still have your job. Everything's cool there, but I'm sure you can't have any more of these crazy incidents, and uh, you're taking precautions. So you, I don't know. <laughs> this is not going to work. She can't bust up in your job like that. Steve? Oh, wow. You know, I I can't, dog, this is a hard one, man, because, you know, I can tell that the guy loves his wife. Mm -hmm. He really does. Mm -hmm. But you got a problem, though, partner. You got a real problem. Okay, so let's go. Uh, you 44. Uh, they've known each other, this woman and his girlfriend, his wife and I, have known each other since high school. Well, I don't know if it says high school, but he's been at the job since he was in the 10th grade. He came from the hood. His wife come from the hood. And they want better for their kids. So let me get this right. He's worked at the manufacturing company since the 10th grade. You worked your way up. Oh, yeah. Then they got married after high school. We had our children fairly young. It's going good. We didn't have much time to be young ourselves. This is a man who is assessing the situation I think very admirably. He he realizes what's happened here. So she ain't had time to keep up with a girlfriend, so now I'm her only friend and she's very clingy. And by her being clingy, this is the statement he makes. That that's how she ended up getting banned from going on work trips. Oh, oh so what happened? Last year to go to Hawaii, she got bored came to the meeting room and barged in on my presentation. Young dude up in there making a presentation and everything. She asked how much longer I'll be. <laughs> Burst in. Now, you can't do that. That's crazy. That, that makes no damn sense at all. And this has nothing to do with being clingy. 
This is unprofessional and this is unbecoming of your wife interfering with the way you earn a living. So this is this ain't no no this ain't got nothing to do with being clingy, man. And your wife cannot be that out of touch to not realize that this is beyond inappropriate. She has got to see that. I don't give a damn how far you from the hood or how clingy you are. I know a whole lot of people that's hood and clingy. Ain't finna walk up in no presentation. But uh, how long you gonna be? <laughs> We're here in Hawaii. Well, he on a work trip. All right. So then he, that his female boss escorted her out. I continue with the process. He could hear him all the way down in the hall hollering and stuff. Mm-hmm. Your wife yelled at me. I'll tell you the rest of it when we come back. This lady. Yeah, hang on. All right, coming up, part two of Steve's response to today's strawberry letter, Fight or Flight. Um, We'll have that at 23 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is Fight or Flight. So this couple been married since high school. This man has had this job since the 10th grade. He done worked his way up to a real nice capacity. He's doing presentations at the company now. They go on trips. They have two wonderful kids that they want to have a better life than the one they had. And now they had some problems because on the last trip to Hawaii last year, uh, she doesn't have any friends because they got married so young. And he's, she's his, he's her best friend. And that's caused her to be real clingy. Well, and they were at the work, uh, they were at the work trip, and he was in the office somewhere giving a presentation. Wife got bored, came to the presentation, barged in, and said, "How much longer are you gonna be?" Wow. He couldn't believe it. He could not believe it. Yes. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, she didn't barge in because she hood. She didn't barge in because she clingy. I know a lot of clingy people. I know a lot of hood people. That's not why she barged in. She barged barged in because she ignorant. Hmm. Because she ignorant. That's ignorance. You gonna come in here and the only place that y'all earning a living, this man made a way for his family, and then you come in here with this ignorance. Barge in while he giving a presentation. His female boss escorts her out of the presentation. He could hear them shouting all the way down the hall. Now, this man is mortified. I almost had a heart attack. And then the wife accuses the female boss of wanting him to herself. No, lady. She tried to spare him the embarrassment of you further humiliating him and interrupting a meeting. So she as a female say, oh, wait a minute, come on. Sister, come this way. What what you doing? No, no, no. That ain't good enough for her. Now, she yelling all the way down the hall. Now, his wife has yelled at him for the rest of the trip, refused to apologize to my boss. She left me no choice but to leave her at home this year. Mm. He say, no, 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 no. We ain't going back to Hawaii. And, dog, you better not take her. No. Mm -mm. Dog, Mm -mm. dog, don't take her. Mm -mm. So now she done said, if she don't get booked for a flight, we're going to fight until I leave, and then after I get back. Well, damn it, it's on then. <laughs> it's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> I don't care. I'm getting on this flight without you. You not coming up in here. You cannot allow her to, a second chance to mess up your job, Mm-mm. dog. Mm-mm. Dog, you done worked too hard to get here. And why she don't see that? Since the 10th grade? No, nah, man. I'm so tired and sexually frustrated because she been holding out on sex, too. I ain't slept in weeks because I feel sorry for her. All I ask is she apologize to my boss and make things right. I ain't apologize no damn body. See, now, the brother want to know, am I being mean for leaving her at home yeah. or did she do this to herself? Bruh, she not only did it to herself, but this don't look real good for you, man. Mm -mm. And if you bring her on that trip, what's to say she won't do something else? She won't apologize to the boss. Suppose on the trip she run up into your boss. She gonna do it. She ain't gonna apologize. She might do the same thing. 
this could turn ugly. You have yeah. to leave her at home because she won't even apologize for the wrong in it that she did. You're dealing, man, with a person, man, who is just only thinking of themselves. Now, this is a righteous dude because guess what he said? He said, you know what? I feel sorry for her. I ain't slept in weeks because I know she's lonely. She ain't got no friends. He's found a way to be compassionate for his wife. So you've done all you can do. She has to go. She cannot go on this trip, though. Mm -mm. She, Mm -mm. you got to leave her at home. Any questions? Anybody? I, I don't know how he completed his uh, his speech as they going down the hall arguing. With the oh, family. I can do that. I can do that. Man, let me tell you something, man. Sure I've been in a situation. I've been slapped before I go on stage before. I've been cussed out before what? I go on stage before. What? No, all that, man. I, no, I don't. No, no, no. I'm going to do my job. before doing stand-up? Yeah. Yeah, dog. Yeah, I'm going to go do my job, dog. I'm going to go do my job. You come in here and act all the bigger fool you want to. <laughs> I, so, I'm gonna go out here. I'm gonna do my job. So I, and he I did that. finish a presentation. Mm-hmm. That ain't nothing. Yeah, that he ain't did nothing. that. You, you I, I just don't like the fact that. I, no, I mean, that ain't you, nothing. I don't hear. I ain't hear hell happened to me before. <laughs> huh. But you get slapped to go out there and say, "What's happening, y'all? How y'all doing out here tonight? Just yeah, show your love. Come on, show now. your love. <laughs> See, you the two that. of you, the two of you are not understanding that level of commitment and professionalism, and the show must go on. I'm committed you know, all the okay. way. Committed. Okay, I just okay. can't take an ass whoop before I go out there, though. You get slapped 10 minutes before you go on stage. Okay, so now, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Tommy and Kia ain't going to be able to work tonight. Uh, <laughs> no, we gotta, no, we we're working. That. We got to get the we check. Got, no, we no, work. got to go okay. work, Tom. Okay. What is we talking about? <laughs> we talking about that slap when I get on stage. That's my whole set is that damn slap. Well, see, now, now, <laughs> let's go over this. <laughs> You're bringing your personal life and matters onto the stage. Have you not seen that play out recently? Yeah, I've seen that before. <laughs> Do you think people want to pay their money here while you getting slapped? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just asking a question. All right, post your comments Precious. on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey Hello. FM. On Instagram good. Yeah, and boy, Facebook. Good, man. And check out the Damn. Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. Free never sounded so good. You can download it today. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from Junior and Sports Talk Ooh. right after oh, this. Man. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he is here. Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, the NFL draft starts tonight, Unc, it's, and Tommy is on tonight, man. Uh, but we don't really have to watch tonight because we ain't got no picks in the first round. We don't have a pick don't. in the first round No, we don't. We don't have a pick in the first round. We really don't have to tune in until Friday. That's it. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. we're we the cool. 42nd pick and the 86th pick in the third round, second and third round. Cleveland, y'all ain't got a pick in the first round either. Y'all, y'all is 54th and 85th in second and third on Friday. So that's all when you got to tune in, Unc. So who's up for going first, Junior? Caleb Williams going to Chicago. That's all we know right now. Uh, we're supposed to be, uh, you know, Jaden Daniels out of LSU. He might go to Washington. But did you hear what happened to him, man? What? He went to Top Golf, and the Washington Commanders had all the other quarterbacks at Top Golf just to see what would happen, put them all in one room. And Jaden didn't like that because if I'm the pick, why is all these other quarterbacks here? And see, that didn't sit well with him because it's like, you know, if you're going to court me, court me. Don't court everybody else. So we don't know if he really want to go to Washington dog, after dog, that. Dog, but dog, hey dog, these young boys today, y'all, you ain't in the league yet. If you gonna court me, court me. That ain't how this work, man. <laughs> this is professional. This is professional sports. Dog, mm-hmm. welcome to the real world. See, that's what happens though. When you've been a, a college star, you've been a high school star, you've been a pee wee football star, you've been caught up. Well, this for money now, homie. Yeah. This for a check. Now they bought your ass up to top golf. I only want to be at top golf. Man, your <laughs> punk ass, pick that club up and hit your ball. Your turn next. <laughs> yeah, you know, but now he got he now his mouth stuck out because there's some other quarterbacks there. Man, this the NFL, dog. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dog, this yeah. is pro, dog, bro, bro, bro. You know. Bro, if, they let they let guys that have a proven track record. Denver just let Russell Wilson go. Dog, they mm-hmm. just let you go. Uh, man, stop. You know, Unc, man, this is an opportunity to change your life right here. Uh, what would you say the first thing they need to do? Because they finna come into a lot of money. 
at, at a young age. You know. Well, at, we at, know exactly how much money they're going to come because the first yeah. round that you make X amount of dollars, we already know where they're coming up. But I'm just telling you right now, get ready. Get ready mm-hmm. because the problems you're about to have, you have no idea. They can't prepare you for them. Never had them before. Mm-mm. And your first set of problems going to come from family and friends. And then Automatically. The, and then the uh, vultures are sitting around figuring out how they can get a piece. His little agent, the little marketing agent, the lawyer, the CPA, and they all tie together. You got to watch that, man. Yeah. You got to watch that. Half them people you do not need. <laughs> At all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sad yeah. thing, man. It is. <laughs> Let's get ready to watch the draft this weekend. We're going to find out who went where. All right, Junior. Thank you. Coming up at the top of the hour, Steve, a man on social media needs you. He says, my teenage son is against showering. He needs some advice. We'll talk about that right after what? this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So, Steve, this is from George from uh, Steve Harvey FM. George says, hey, Steve, I'm one of your blue eyed soul brother listeners and I need some advice. This past Monday with, was Earth Day and my teenage son has been reading or seeing online that there might be a water shortage in our town and he wants to conserve water to help save our planet. As a result, he now says he's going to, quote, do his part to help the situation by refusing to shower. While I respect his intention, he also is playing baseball and soccer and sweating a lot. And then one day he tried to refuse to flush the toilet. He insists that we're in the wrong for not caring about our community and the planet. Okay, I get the conservation and recycling is important. I get that. But what can we say to him that'll resonate more than whatever it is he's seeing on social media? Well, we first of all, Blue Eyes Soul Brother, thank you for calling. Let me give you a couple pieces. Yeah, George. Number one, all you have to do with this little boy in this shower is uh, coordinate with a, another parent down the street mm-hmm. and ask uh, them, can they bring their daughter to the house? And then have the daughter just politely say, I don't like boys who smell. And I would never date a boy who smell. That case is over. The best thing I did at my boys camp one year was Mm -hmm. the boys were talking about manners. Mr. Harvey, that's old school. Don't nobody open doors, pull out chairs no more. We don't do it like that. We don't walk. We walk whatever side. What different what side to side were you walking on? I had some young girls who were visiting my daughters. I had them young girls come down to the camp one night, and I brought them up on stage, and all 150 of them boys set up in their chairs because they were teenage girls, and they, they were gorgeous little girls. And they were going around the room, and I was just asking them questions without embarrassing any boy. Do you like boys who wear their hair like this? No. Do you like boys who sag and wear their pants like this? No. And I went down the line with a couple of questions. Do you know the next day that barber shop was full? <laughs> <laughs> Them little boys in there getting haircuts. Them little boys was in there. I ain't see nobody sagging because the little girls was on the other side of the ranch doing some mm-hmm. other things. And every now and then I'd go get my pliers and put them on the pliers and just drive them through the camp. You know, they stayed uh-huh. on the truck with me because they were teenage girls. I don't put them in the situation with the Right. Them boys right there pull their pants up. Them, that barbershop was full of boys getting hair cut. All you got to do is introduce that. Now, second, here's the other thing you do. What you're not finna do is you're not finna not flush this damn toilet. <laughs> okay. okay. That. Come on, because you going to get your damn jaw cracked in here. You ain't flushing toilet. I don't give a damn what's happening in the environment. You're not finna mess up this environment trying to say that damn environment outside. Yeah. Now, don't flush another th- toilet in here and watch what happened to your throat. Because I'm going to sucker punch your ass dead in your damn throat. <laughs> now, nah, you've got to add a little bit of blackness to your child rearing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Blue eyes, <George>. so. <laughs> Yeah, you ain't here leaving doors open, standing there with the refrigerator open. You ain't bought yeah. nothing in there. Shut that yeah. damn door. All this here, right here. Yeah, yeah, you ain't got to do that. All this respect. And, see, respect begets respect. Yeah, I'll respect your wishes. You want to save the planet. But you're going to respect the rules up in here. Mm-hmm. Now, your ass ain't working. You're down here riding your 
funky ass round in here running up and down this football field Sweat. kicking this ball and stuff. You're not finna bring your little stanky ass in here. You ain't eating a damn thing till you bathe. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. That worked. All right. Nah, them yeah. the rules. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That worked. Yeah. That worked. Another Wait, one, Shirley? But, yeah, I do have another one. We don't have time. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's all right. All right. That's yeah. good advice, though, yeah, with George. Great good. advice right there. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I got teenage boys. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. why he wrote you, because mm-hmm. he knows. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's on social Please. media, so George, you heard Steve. That's what you save do. The earth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, that boy stank though. God. No. <laughs> but not flushing. I got the something toilet. you can say. You better save your earth. You better save your ass. I don't want you to <laughs> <laughs> We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at twenty minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Authorities in Philadelphia say some crustacean crooks took about $30,000 worth of crabs from a truck outside of Walmart. According to multiple news outlets, the thieves arrived in four separate cars, assaulted a delivery truck driver, leaving him injured, and took the boxes of Grandpa Harvey's crabs. Uh, And just a few weeks prior, more thieves stole $12,000 worth of pork and another cargo heist of a shipment of bourbon. Wow, they're just stealing, huh? (laughs) Philly, crabs, liquor. (laughs) I'm going to tell you something. Stealing stealing crabs ain't ain't a smart ass move. (laughs) Why you say that, Steve? You got to have a buy for them crabs that night. Immediately, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I ain't think yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. These thieves don't have uh, cold storage facilities. <laughs> 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 they got that damn locker down there at the U-Haul storage place. And uh-huh. I'm saying, you set them crabs in there and come back tomorrow, Ooh. and I'm going to show you something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. See, yeah. These, these don't think stuff out, man. Certain stuff you don't need to steal. Right. Crabs. Crabs. Crabs, pork, and liquor. Bourbon. Bourbon. Wow. And that bourbon, mm-hmm. you, 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 if you can get your hands on bourbon and cigarettes, that's, that's what you want to steal. <laughs> Is this I a mean, lesson? You don't want a You're tutorial on game. what to steal. All right. All right. <laughs> 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 All right, coming up in 33 minutes after the hour. Keep telling us to, ain't no need to go to jail without nothing for nothing now. <laughs> Would you rather? Coming up next. Do something with some purpose. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather have disappointing sex for a full year? Disappointing sex for a whole year? Or would you ha- rather have great sex only for one night? Like nah, oh uh, no, nah. nah, nah, give me that disappointment. Nah. Disappointment, oh, yeah, long. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. can deal yeah, with I that. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really mind being disappointed. I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> Bad is good sometimes. Yeah, it is. come on. Yeah, I can, long, I can reason yeah, with that. Really. Yeah, yeah. Right. It can get better. It can get better. I know you tired. I know you went to work. I know. I got it. It's okay. <laughs> we'll work. We'll work on it again tomorrow. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather a nose that never stops growing or ears that never stop growing? Can we add one to that? What? Can we have a nose that never stops growing, ears that stop growing, or a hairline that never stops coming. <laughs> mm. That's not in mm. here, Junior. <laughs> Junior. <laughs> oh my God! I was just asking it for the. Now you wasn't. Yeah, Why would you say? Why would you say? Now you didn't. Ah, <laughs> Shirley, why in the world? Uh-uh, would you don't say try to flip you? it. Don't try I'll to flip there. it. What, is we you all at know. The <laughs> <laughs> I just want to have no options on the wood. Ah. <laughs> Go ahead, Go ahead Shirley. Which one? <laughs> Well, I guess I'm gonna have to go with hairline. <laughs> that's not in here. Yeah, yeah that's one there. I'll take two. <laughs> 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 All right, we're moving on. If you were single and had a one night stand, would you rather your date stay the night and make breakfast the next morning? Yeah. Or would you yeah. or huh? Or would you or rather what? your date catch an Uber home uh, home before sunrise? Your car oh, outside. Get the Uber. Yeah, I'll be out there with you. Like when you yeah, before sunrise. Before sunrise, yeah. They've got to leave sun, at night. Sun, sunrise too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't really like this person. <laughs> no, hell no. 
It's a one night stand. We ain't right. cooking breakfast, and and we not because you're not gonna look the same way. Nah. You know, you was in them platform heels, you know, mm-hmm. and that makeup on. We had them blue lights in that club. Uh-huh. Everything was kicking in the morning. Mm. <laughs> the eyelash off. <laughs> One eyelash, you know, on the pillowcase. Uh-uh. No, no. I don't need cigarettes here. <laughs> so Uber at night. Okay. Yeah. Uber at Before night. Before sunrise. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uber. Uh-huh. I'm, then I got to download that app because I ain't got no Uber. So. <laughs> <laughs> we know oh, that. Have mercy. We know I, that. I be calling people. Hey, man, how I get out of here? What <laughs> Order me an Uber, dog. <laughs> 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 All right, so no one night stands for you guys, <laughs> for sure. He says sunrise. <laughs> That's today's round of Would You Rather, guys. Coming up at 49 minutes after our last break of the day, and we'll close out the show with the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, last break of the day on this Thursday. This is a fast week, man. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, it is going by pretty yep, fast. It is. Really fast, oh, yeah. huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Steve, before we get out of here, uh, we have another uh, question for you. CJ needs some advice. Um, he says, my pops needs some, some dating help. My mom passed away a couple of years ago, and I can tell my dad is feeling lost and alone. I try to w- hang out with him when I can, but I can also tell that companionship from his son isn't exactly what he needs. I have no idea what the best way is for a guy who's pushing 60 to find someone new and spend time with, or even how dating works when you're that old. Any tips (laughs) on where he can go to find a woman his age, or should he be doing online dating? That's his question. Well, damn. (laughs) Oh, Uh, 60 well, years old? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, what's the letter guy's name? What's his, his name? His name is CJ. C- well, CJ, I appreciate you le- letting me know that it's over for me. That uh, <laughs> I am old and beyond. It's and not I don't about know you. Yeah, it is. It doesn't sound like it. But anyway, though, CJ, here's, here's the deal, man. Uh, you got a couple of things. Probably, number one, your dad misses your mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, grief mm-hmm. is a part of this. Number two, uh, they probably had a great relationship, and he just he just don't know where to start. He is going to figure it out. But a sixty year old single man has more than enough options, more mm-hmm. than enough options, because it is enough women out here that would be glad to help him through his his dog times, and mm-hmm. and and help him move on through life. Uh, He's got to get out a little bit, but he don't have to go far. Online dating is uh, available if he's up to it, you know, uh, but he got places he can go and meet women. Uh, That ain't a problem. You can go down to that church. Mm -hmm. uh, You can go down there to uh, groceries. It's just a lot of places. But he's got to get a little bit of a social life going on, you know. Mm-hmm. Go down there and make some things happen. It's hard for me to tell him where to start. Yeah. It would be so easy for a famous person to get back out there. But I'm <laughs> talking about the average guy is what I'm trying to think of. Mm-hmm. What would I do? Okay. Yeah, well, church is an option. It's a lot of... Women down yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Um, good women. Uh, yeah. Conferences. Uh, oh, yeah, you that's see a good these, one. Uh, women like, expos uh, you know, and empowerment. Yeah. Women expos and stuff. You know, go on down there. Get you a room. Uh, you don't have to <laughs> travel. Get yeah, just get a room down there. You ain't got to register for the conference. <laughs> and walk around just, in the lobby. Yeah. <laughs> All you got to do is walk through that lobby and get out there on that resort. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> dress okay. nice, walk through there, and ask, mm-hmm. well, and just stop. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's what's going on this week? Oh, this is a women's conference. Mm-hmm. Oh, you didn't know uh-huh. that? No, I was coming down here. You know, my wife passed, uh, and I was just getting away. Uh, you know, trying to get back out here in the oh, social man, climate. Great mm-hmm. conversation starter. Uh, Came yeah, down uh-huh. here, and I'm just trying to. I that's why I didn't know, but it looks like a lot of lovely people down here. Congratulations. 
Mm. And uh, mm. oh, by the way, excuse me, I didn't, I didn't get your name. Mm-hmm. Mm. Come and on, player, uh, player. Hey, come on, on. I, you, I know that's how a to good conversation move starter right there. My uh, wife, you know, you know what I mean. And I, I think that he's sixty. He's from that generation where he still know how to talk to people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not these texting. Young cats. Yeah, these young cats don't. They ain't got no conversation. Uh-huh. So what I just do like a reenactment, Shirley. Call anybody. Mm-hmm. You could. Uh-huh. I'm walking through the resort. Y'all at a women's conference. Y'all single, mm-hmm. and I I stop you and I say, "Excuse me, uh, excuse me, miss. I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, uh-huh. I noticed a lot of people down here. Uh, do you know what's going on this week?" Yeah, yeah, we do. It's a women's empowerment conference. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Are you yeah. here for the conference? I am. Yes, I am. Wow, wow. Well, so, so it's about well, it's about empowerment. Is it a good yeah. conference? Uh huh. Yeah, it's about empowerment. Women entrepreneurs are getting together. All of that, and you know, just to show. Um, you know, our power and strength and to uplift other women, things like that. Oh, That's what we're okay. Doing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, man, mm-hmm. this is all right. I came down here. I, did, I didn't know. I was just checking into a hotel because my wife passed over a year ago. And I oh, I'm so sorry. Been, you know, oh, I'm so sorry uh, to yeah. hear that. Oh, Are you all right? Sudden. It was sudden. Well, oh. you know, I'm, I'm trying to be. I'm uh-huh. trying to be all right. You know, it's what I'm, oh. I just came out to get some time away, and I, I didn't know they were having a conference at this hotel. You know, I, I wish you all the best, though, and, and good luck with that. Well, you're not leaving, are you? Are you going to stay? No, I'm here for a few days. I, when does the conference end? Well, the conference ends on uh, Sunday. 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 Oh, yeah, we have yeah. Our, oh, yeah. oh, I'm here to Monday. So Thursday, I'll be around here on the Friday. Oh, Saturday, okay. Well, um, we're, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well we have some free time on Saturday evening if you want to hang out or something, oh, you know, have dinner or something like that. Oh, your ass fast. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't say that out loud, but I say that. Uh-uh. Oh, this then... little thirsty. Oh, this little thirsty thing right here. And I'm oh, Shirley's friend. Did you have down. a friend? You... <laughs> right. No, but his wife is dying, though. <laughs> He'll probably be here next year for the conference. <laughs> anyway, you know, shit. Oh, you know, it ain't Wait a minute. Steve. Steve. Come on, no, huh? no, no, no. I was saying she ain't, but it sounded like that. You know, okay. you I, was, I was saying she ain't looking good, but I cut it off and it's like I said. <laughs> Thank you. Good. But she ain't looking good, though. You know, I'm thinking any day now, you know. Uh, well, let's go to happy hour. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> All right, I'll be be down there. Hey, I'm going to call him. He'll probably come down here because she in the hospital. You know what? (laughs) For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 